Well, Jaya Lalitha leaves behind a controversial legacy. While her followers hail her as one of India's greatest female leaders, her critics accuse her of being corrupt and creating a personality cult. She introduced a range of welfare schemes, most of them named after her. But giveaways such as free electricity and laptops for the poor pushed up the state's debt by 92% between the years 2011 and 2015. Critics say she used her position to build a personality cult, as we've mentioned, and her rule also saw scandal with corruption allegations, seeing her briefly jailed on two occasions. Sudha Sudanand, a journalist and media personality, and comes from the same state as Jaya Lalitha. She joins us now from New Delhi. How do we explain her huge popularity? Um, her huge popularity is of mythical proportions. This is the way uh, Indian democracy quintessentially works, where you could be corrupt, you could go to jail, but if you're pro-poor and if you've seen as earth mother, the quintessential mother, the primordial mother, then everything is forgiven. Jalalita, for the people of Tamil Nadu, was almost like a messiah. She brought a message and as she leaves, Thousands, rather, one million and counting, mourn for her. OK, when you talk about her as a primordial mother, that's a very impressive piece of terminology. Does that mean she's above what anyone else would see as corruption or allegations of corruption? Absolutely. She's a demigoddess for the people who love her. They see her as an epitome of sacrifice, of somebody who will always put herself before and you know take the suffering of the multitudes so like i said she's almost like a mythical biblical figure and in the indian context and particularly the subcontinental culture mothers are forgiven because of the fact that they are mothers and therefore they're above board what's her legacy her legacy is proper i heard what your story said that she gave free electricity and laptops but I think, most importantly, she gave people food in a country which is poor, where people do not get two or rather three square meals. Jalalita saw that they got their, you know, their meals every day. That is most important. Simple things that she gave them, which made their life happy and easy, rather than electricity and laptop, is her legacy, that she helped them get on with life every day. Is it unfair and slightly unrealistic, perhaps, to look in on what she did, what you're saying she achieved, and label her posthumously as having been corrupt? Those are some of the central allegations that were always levelled against her. Could it be, and I mean this with a lot of respect, could it be that what the rest of the world would label as corruption is just the lubricant of how certain politicians operate? It's how certain bits of politics around the world operate and, and the rest of the world maybe has to accept that? Well, uh, corruption has a special meaning when it comes to politics. Is Trump corrupt? We shall have to wait and watch. But the truth is that he's won the elections. And I think in the Indian context as well, and as the world's largest democracy, corruption has a legalese meaning and it has a different meaning when it comes to people electing a leader. She could as well turn around and say that if I was corrupt and if I was found guilty, it is because I was amassing wealth to help you people. After all, when I die, I go empty-handed to my maker. And that is the philosophical you know, reasoning and principle behind most subcontinental leaders who may be mired in corruption charges. India is now today such, in some senses, a successful country. It's an outward-looking country. We talk about it here on Al Jazeera a lot. Was she a product of her time? And if she was, has Indian politics now moved on and changed so that we won't see her like again? She was indeed the product of her time. This is mythical. I mean, it may almost seem like a time warp to the Western eye and mind that millions of people around and cry and beat their chest for a leader who's departed. Having said that, India has changed. More than 60% of our population is youth. There is social media. They have great exposure to the Western world. And yes, we are a very progressive country. But culturally, we are still rooted in the sense of tomorrow, a leader of our caliber arrives and holds our hand and takes us forward. I'm sure that there is place for another Jalalita in the political spectrum of India. Sudanand, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us here on the News Hour.